oceans are quite literally the cradle of life on Earth. It's in our oceans that life is thought to have originated and today some 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. It's home to some of our oldest species and supports some of the world's most diverse ecosystems. But what happens when this delicate balance is destroyed, like with the uh, Gulf of Mexico oil spill? Can science play a role in helping prevent these disasters, or when they happen, limiting their impact? In this episode of Earth's Frontiers, we'll be showing you some of the cutting-edge technologies that could hold the key to preserving life in and around our oceans, from DNA sequencing to autonomous undersea gliders. First, though, we'll tell you about a remarkable innovation that environmentalists hope could limit the impact of that particular oil spill and avert a permanent ecological catastrophe. I was the commissioner during the Exxon Valdez spill, which meant that I was responsible for enforcing the cleanup standards. Denny Kelso is vice president of the nonprofit Ocean Conservancy. He's heading out to examine the marshlands of Louisiana with Philippe Cousteau, grandson of famous explorer Jacques Cousteau. You know, marshes and wetlands you can think of as the nurseries of the ocean uh, for so many species that rely on them for a, a critical, very early stage in their life cycle. Even in this fragile ecosystem, nature can be resilient, healing itself through what is known as bioremediation. And you're depending upon bacteria to consume and metabolize the oil so that it is basically transformed and no longer toxic and no longer a threat. I'm looking at crude oil on uh, the grasses that make up a good share of this island, certainly the, the vegetative mat that, that keeps this... Uh, island together. And so once this grass dies, the root system dies, and everything that's holding all this mud and sand in place that creates this island in the first place gets eroded away and the island disappears. Now they, there's a limit to how much a little tiny organism can, can eat, but if they're given some time and have um, other conditions right, they will uh, consume oil. So what conditions are a factor? Well, temperature, uh, oxygen, um, the, uh, the substrate, the, the material in which the oil is, is occurring are all factors. And so if you're working on a, on a beach that uh, is made up of sand grains, you have a very different situation than if you're working in, a, in the water at, at uh, 500 feet deep. With any spill, there is some evaporation that occurs and some oil that actually sinks. ERP's Petroleum Remediation Product. Byron Yordanopoulos, with Universal Remediation, has developed a powder that stimulates bioremediation, speeding up this natural process. The main system was developed by NASA. That means they developed the microsphere, which is very important for PRP. These microspheres are hollow and they're buoyant. These microspheres are filled with beeswax, a natural food for microbes. We do not add any microbes in our PRP. It's just 100% filtered beeswax, nothing else. PRP will bind immediately, grab the hydrocarbon. Once it grabs it, it's a stable matrix. You cannot recycle it anymore. Once it grabs the oil in the water, it will float. It will allow the indigenous microbes that are in the water to start eating the hydrocarbon and the PRP at the same time. Absolutely no smell of methane gas or hydrocarbon or anything like that. Just to give you an idea, 200 pounds of PRP will bioremediate one acre of land that is contaminated with hydrocarbon. And it will penetrate three inches deep and will bioremediate all that contaminated soil. Bioremediation mm -hmm. will depend on the type of hydrocarbon you have, 
the volume of the hydrocarbon it can take from one week up to 12 weeks for it to be completely gone. Everything happens in nature in balance. And when you have all this bacteria that's blooming, it's throwing things out of balance because the system isn't used to having this much bacteria in it. And it's consuming oxygen and creating low oxygen areas where literally other creatures like fish uh, and shrimp, crabs, suffocate. Beeswax is used in cosmetics. Just like the video that we so it is a very safe product, very safe for the marine life. We have sold it to Abu Dhabi where they have uh, used it in Abu Dhabi with great success. They have used it in Ireland. We did a work in Mexico. With or without PRP, full bioremediation takes a long time. Uh, really, I think, as we've seen in Exxon Valdez, there's still oil in that ecosystem. None of the major fisheries and, and wildlife uh, species have recovered. If you dig down, though, in heavily oiled beaches, we've been very surprised to see how much oil still remains and how close to liquid form it is. No one product is going to do all the work. We know that. It's unrealistic for one product to do. This got to be a combined effort of different companies, different products to do the job. None of these ecosystems were healthy to begin with. And I think that's important to remember. It's like a human catching pneumonia. You might be able to handle that. But if you're already suffering from pneumonia and then you catch meningitis, and on top of that, maybe you catch a form of cancer, you don't have a chance. Over 90% of all species that ever lived are thought now to be extinct, and yet new species are being discovered all the time, especially in our oceans. The catch of the day, not immediately identifiable. Coming up, we're going to show you why these scientists are in a race against time to barcode the DNA of all marine life.